Okay, guys, this is the very first session uh, which we have started. Um, it's like mentorship as well as guiding people on testing and automation as well as um, helping them on the interview part, job search part. But before we start this, we should understand what is the problem? What is the gap? Right. If you will define the problem properly, then only you will be able to find the solution, the correct solution. Right. So I have I have noted down some points with discussion with all of you present here, and I'll talk about these things one by one. Right. Very first thing. Testing and automation, both are not different thing, especially nowadays when you are working in agile environment. Automation is the by default logical need to be performed in any project. Reason is very simple. Number of test cases are getting increased. Okay, the, the release every, so let's understand how software development works in every 15 days or in every 30 days, you are delivering something valuable to your client or the customer. So when you deliver something, you create the test cases, test scenarios. Every time you create new test cases for the new feature, as well as you test the old features also so that you will confirm that everything which was working earlier is also working fine now. So you have regression test cases. So number of test cases are getting increased with every release, but the number of days to perform the test execution is still same. So in industry, it's not like that that you have 100 test cases, so you will get two days. And if you have 500 test cases, you will get 10 days for the execution. It's not happening like this. Because delivery time is fixed, number of days to deliver something is fixed. What industry want is your old test cases, you have to execute it in a fast way. So automation is important. There is no doubt about it. So when we are saying testing, it includes testing the application in different ways, including automation. Fine. Now, there is a second point which somebody asked about shifting from IT, non-IT to IT. Let's understand this part. If you are from the background like BCA, BSc Computer Science, MSc Computer Science, MCA, BE, BTEC, MTech, ME, right? But if you're related to computers somewhere, let's say IT branch, computer science branch, electronics branch, you are automatically in touch of something. So that is called, okay, you are in IT already. Now, non-IT field means, let's assume that you, are, you did your engineering or some other field, let's say you are coming from commerce background, let's say. So you are from some other stream of engineering and now you want to come to the IT or the software company. Okay, that I am clarifying what is called non-IT to IT. For them, the things are bit, you know, difficult because first of all, you have to understand about how IT things work, software development works, how programming language works, how it is important, those things. But it's not like that, that you cannot learn all, all these things. Anybody can learn it. There is an open environment, right? In online, there are a lot of things available. Only thing is you have to understand about learning in a systematic way. 
okay we'll talk about this things maybe if any question will again arise now the eighth point which is not related to testing i note down that 3.5 years my question is what is 3.5 years what does this mean can anybody tell me in chat window i am not able to understand what is the meaning of 3.5 years Put it in chat window. What is 3.5 years? Three years and six months, somebody is saying. Prashant is saying this, but believe me, 90% of the, you know, anyone people will say three years and three years and five months. You may be thinking what, what small thing I'm talking about, but let's understand this is important. 3.5 years is not three years and five months. Think logically, think mathematically. 3.5 years means three years and 0.5 means half of the year. So 3.5 years means three years and six months. And six months. It's not three years and five months. I can I, I can prove it mathematically what I'm saying. If you think 3.5 years means three years and five months, tell me what is the meaning of 3.9 years? You will be saying three years and nine months. Correct? You will say 3.9 years means 3 years and 9 months. Fine. After 0.9, what comes? 10. You may be saying after 0.9, 9, after 9, 10 comes. So we will say 3.110 years I have worked. So what does that, does that mean? 3.10 years. You will say it's equal to three years and 10 months, correct? Now tell me, you're saying 3.10 means three years and 10 months. So tell me what is three years and one month? 3.1, correct? 3.1 years is three years and one month. Mathematically, 3.10 and 3.1 both are same. So do you want to say 3.3 3 years and 1 month is equals to 3 years and 10 month? No. Right? You may be thinking that what I'm saying. But as a QA, let's understand that we cannot use the wrong words logically. And we have to understand it. So my first suggestion is stop saying 3.5, 3.3 year. We have done this in, in our practice, which is a bad practice because it is mathematically wrong to say 3.5. Or if you are saying, if you are saying you have to give the right answer then that 3.5 years means three years and six months. It's not three years and five months. Okay. If you are saying 3.5 means three years and five months, then you will be in trouble mathematically then you are proving yourself that you don't know mathematics. Okay. Fine. I hope you are, you guys understand what I'm saying. So it's better in your resume. When you are creating your resume, where you're mentioning the years of experience mention, let's say you have eight years and 11 month. Don't say 8.11 years. You should say eight years and 11 month of experience. Great. Now, uh, somebody said that they are in manual testing. Again, don't use this word. Right? Testing is testing. Whether it is manual or the automation or anything. I know that when you want to represent yourself, you want to say you have done on manual testing. That's fine. But 
testing is a common word. So you can say, okay, I am working on testing. Okay. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Okay. Then, so I was talking about manual testing. So say, okay, I, I am into software testing. Then if somebody will ask you that whether you know automation or not, then you say that I am a beginner, I am a learner, I have experience, right? Okay. <clears throat> now the question is how to learn test automation framework. Okay. Uh, that is the technical part as of now. I am parking this question because not everyone will be interested to, to learn about it. If I get time, I'll come th to this point at the end. But as a framework, I can tell you what is framework first. So test automation framework means you are creating a system. You are connecting different things in a way that your test automation suite will be executed smoothly. The reporting will happen smoothly. The people will get to know how many test cases passed and failed. At the same time, your framework should be very easy to maintain, easy to learn, easy to understand. So that is called test automation framework. There are different frameworks, hundreds of framework. We will talk about it later on. Now the question is about Cypress. Uh, so this is a tool which is most, it's based on JavaScript and TypeScript. You can write your code in JavaScript and TypeScript and you can you execute your UI automation code and API testing also through Cypress. Now the thing is, there are different tools, but most, you know, most what we heard about is is Selenium. We heard about, let's say, Playwright, right? You must have heard about it. Or uh, UFT, Renorax, and there are tools which are codeless or low code tools, right? So you can use some licensed or the paid tool to, to automate your test cases. Now, Last one, then we will open for the discussion. Brush up. This is a negative concept. Right? Brush up means you want to do something quickly. And you want to pass the interview somehow. right? Or you want to present something somehow that you know something. So it's better don't you know, do just brush up thing. Because when you do brush up, you learn theoretically. When we say, I want to brush up my knowledge about Java programming. So do you want to just go like overview part and see the web website? Okay, some programming thing. Okay, concept wise. Okay, it works like this. It works like this. It won't work practically. So it's better. Don't just brush up. Actually go in depth for programming part also, for any concept part also, for automation also, for learning GitHub also, for learning Jenkins also. When you are preparing for your interview, you may say that, okay, I have made some notes and I want to brush up that part. That's perfectly fine. You can say that, okay, I have SQL notes, which I created while doing practical and I want to do brush up. That's perfectly fine. But when you're preparing for your career, right? If you're serious about what you want to do in future, so don't do like just brush up part. You have to hold a particular technology and be good with this and be, you know, master on that. If you are thinking that I am a manual test engineer, let's say, if you use the word, okay, I'm doing more on the manual testing side and I will just learn some small selenium and let's get into the automation or become automation engineer. It's, it's not like that. 
to become automation engineer or doing automation as well, it's more of mindset first that, okay, I will learn this thing. I learn this properly and then I will implement it throughout my career. If you are thinking that I will learn automation so that I will become a lead, then after four years, I'll become the manager. So I will not do anything on the automation or uh, I'm learning it for temporarily so that, you know, your purpose is solved and you get a salary hike or you switch the job. Let's understand. If you want to become better manager also, better leader also, or any professional in the future, as your experience go grows, you should grow technically also. Leadership skill, communication skill, all those things are important. But you cannot, you know, avoid or neglect the technical part. And it's not difficult. There are a lot of hype created about programming, automation and all. It's not difficult. People have created unnecessary hype. And there is a fear of coding then is, you know, um, created around yourself that it's difficult. Fine. So that's it the, for the first part of what we want to, you know, um, say.